Hello and welcome to Maker Hanger. My name is Lucas Weekly, and today I'm going to be giving you some advice on how to fly your tricopter. So let's get started. First off, like in last season, a simulator is your best friend, and a lot of them have multi-copters already inside of them. Just like an airplane, when a multi-copter faces you, its roll and yaw controls are reversed, and that's just something you'll have to get used to. Another way to practice your multi-copter flying skills is with the use of a toy like this one. Most of these are quadcopters, but you can still learn the controls because multicopters in general fly very similarly. These things are so much fun, and I have one just to practice my flying skills and just to have fun with. And what's great is they're almost indestructible. So I've linked this one in the description if you're interested. The controls for a multicopter are identical to an airplane. So for a mode 2 transmitter, which is what we fly in the US, you have your throttle and rudder control on the left, and your aileron and elevator or roll and pitch control on the right. Now that you have a general understanding of how to control a multicopter, you need to find a flight site for your tricopter, and my front yard is big enough for me to fly mine. Multicopters don't need that much space to fly, and any front or backyard will do. I've even seen people test their multicopters in their living room or bedrooms, but I don't recommend that. Well, now that we have our flight site, let's go fly. Once you get to your flight site, just unfold the frame and lock the arms into place. Then turn on your transmitter and plug in the battery to your tricopter. Then arm it by putting the throttle rudder stick in the bottom right hand corner. To take off, simply increase the throttle until the tricopter starts to lift off the ground and then continue doing so until it clears all the obstacles around you. Now your first couple of flights will be dedicated to trimming out your tricopter, so no matter how level you get your flight controller board when you calibrate the accelerometers, it'll always want to push a certain direction. So what you're going to have to do is take off the tricopter, see which way it's moving, and then compensate that movement with the trim tabs. The multi-wee flight controller boards are kind of nice in the fact that they'll save your trims no matter if you disarm them or not. Some flight Flight controller boards require you to save them inside their program and then zero out your trims later or just completely retrim them every flight. So you'll just have to look at that inside the tutorials for your flight controller board. Now, if you've never flown a multicopter before, these trimming flights are going to be the hardest thing for you to overcome. That's because you're probably nervous, and your initial instinct when the tricopter gets off the ground and starts moving away from you is to slow it down. So if you've ever flown an airplane or driven a car, the way to slow them down is by letting off the throttle. But a multicopter can't glide or roll, so the second you let off the throttle, it's just going to fall straight down. So you're going to have to get rid of your instinct of killing the throttle and start correcting the tricopter's movements by rolling and pitching it to stay in a single position. All of this while maintaining a constant altitude by decreasing and increasing your throttle. Now that's probably going to take you a while to learn and the tricopter has a 12 minute flight time so you're probably going to have to land. And landing is pretty simple, all you have to do is decrease the throttle until the tricopter touches the ground and then the second it does, it decrease the throttle all the way. If you don't kill the power completely, then the tricopter is just going to bounce around on the ground. Okay, now that we've flown around for a little bit, we can notice that the tricopter may be yawing in a certain direction because we have this motor horizontal. And that's okay, because of the torque roll from all the motors, the uh, tricopter is going to want to spin one way, so the tail is going to have to counter that. So I've noticed that my tricopter has been veering to the right every time I go to fly. So I'm going to move the servo arm one click to the right, just like that, so that now the motor will be pulling the nose to the left. So that's gonna counter that movement. And uh, if you need any more, you can always move another one or you can untighten these and then move them so that it goes to the right amount. You just have to play around with it until you've got it where you want it. You don't wanna use your trim because your trim is gonna be used to do the fine tuning. So now I'm gonna put the bolt in so this arm is secure. Once your tricopter is all trimmed out, you're ready to do some basic maneuvers that'll help you learn the controls. Start by picking a point on the ground directly in front of you, and then another about 20 or 30 feet forward of that point. Hover the tricopter directly in front of you, then pitch it forward until it reaches the second point. Then pitch it back and get it into a hover at that secondary point. Once it's hovered there for a little while, bring it back and hover it right in front of you. Practice doing this maneuver until you feel comfortable with your pitch control. Pick two points off the left and right of you, and then use the roll control to move the tricopter between these points. When you're doing any of these maneuvers, try to keep the tricopter at your head level 
level or above, so you don't get any turbulence off the ground. Also, it's very important to keep the front of the tricopter pointed away from you so you don't get disoriented. Once you've gotten the individual controls down, you can start combining them with a little bit of rudder control and you can get figure eight movements, but I'm still keeping the nose pointed away from me so that I don't get disoriented. Once you've gotten good at hovering and flying around, you're ready to do some circuit flying, which is exactly what we do with an airplane. So you're gonna be looking at the front of the tricopter. Only do this when you're completely comfortable with the controls or you might get disoriented and crash. To start, fly the tricopter the full length of your flight site, then turn it around and fly back the other direction. And then just continue this. If you get disoriented or scared, all you have to do is yaw the tricopter so that the tail is facing you and then you know your orientation. Learning all these controls and getting comfortable with them will take some time and you're definitely not gonna be able to do it within the course of this video. So practice makes perfect and I know I wasn't this good when I first started off. Now that you have your tricopter trimmed and you're more comfortable with flying it, it's time for you to tune it. The settings I gave you will work, but you might want to change them to suit your flying style. Now, if I had to explain to you what the PID settings did and how to change them accordingly, we'd be here for a while. So I've linked an article in the description from Flight Test website by Matthew DD, who wrote a very in-depth breakdown of what these settings do. Check that out, and remember this is all done through trial and error. You want to get the settings to how you like them, and I can't do that for you. Another way to improve the performance of your tricopter is by balancing the propellers. This will remove a lot of vibrations that may be affecting your flight controller board or camera equipment. So if you're interested in doing this, I've linked a tutorial in the description below on how to do it. Just remember to have fun and keep practicing. You'll get great at flying in no time. So once you've gotten good at flying line of sight, you can start to try FPV or first person view. This means using a video transmitting system to transmit the feed coming from the onboard camera of the tricopter and using that to fly the tricopter. I've linked a video series in the description about how to get into FPV, so if you're interested, go check that out. Being able to fly with the tricopter's perspective allows you to maneuver in tighter spaces and fly farther away without losing your orientation. Like I've said before on Maker Hanger, FPV could be a series in and of itself. Luckily, there are plenty of resources for you to learn how to do it, and I've linked a couple in the description below. Now, let's see what the tricopter can really do. I plan on doing more projects with the Maker Hanger Tricopter, so keep an eye out for those. That's it for this episode. Next time, I'll be giving you an intro on the Maker Trainer 2. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.